right, New Bern, live from the heart of downtown New Bern in the Charles Tendell studio. It's that time again for In the Know, Craven Community College's hottest new podcast with Craig Ramey, Chelsea Robinson, and everybody's favorite Megan, Megan Johnson. Good morning, guys. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wait, good morning, wait. Charles. Thanks for having us back. Craig, what is this suit you are wearing? <laughs> this is a festive holiday suit. <laughs> They're they're, um, skiing kitty cat. They are. They're heading down the slopes. They're so happy and so cute. They look a little startled. Uh, But yeah, they're skiing, and I've got some uh, reindeer. They're here either. In there as well. (laughs) And the matching tie. (laughs) Yeah, it all came together. Believe it or not, I got this free. Free? Oh. Yeah. Somebody just wanted to give it away. (laughs) They did. No, it was part of our uh, Dirty Santa party last year. Things were getting passed around. Some people were getting like $50, $60 gifts. I said, no, 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 no. I want that suit. I got the homemade lavender <laughs> candle. <laughs> what did you get? I got the homemade lavender candle. Okay. Yeah. Now, I bet you're wishing you had uh, stuck around for this thing. Um, I'm <laughs> right? glad it, it fits you like a glove. Yeah? yeah. It fits you. Yeah. It was made for you. I feel like it was. Yeah. Look at how cute Chelsea is with her antler ears. Yes. I decided to go the reindeer route with my fur vest. With your my... faux fur. Yes. It's beginning to look a lot like, like Christmas. Christmas. Well, to be fair, I wore my only tacky sweater last week, so I had to kind of, you know, improvise I could have today. Wait a minute. A Chelsea, sweater. What, put your, hold your mask up. It completes the ensemble. It does. So instead of putting it on my nose... There you go. My little Ta-da! <laughs> little Rudolph nose. Very cute. And you've got your, your reindeer pin as well. Y'all so, are very classy this morning. Yeah. So my reindeer pin, it's actually was made by my, one of my children way, way, way back when. So on the back of it, it's so cute. I'm going to take it off and show it to you. So this was, Michaela made this. And can you'll have to do a real close-up. Can you do that close-up, Charles? Oh, oh, nine. Let me get it. Oh, mom. It says yeah. mom on it in 09. Nice. Aww. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Can you see it? Yep. Yep, so my Michaela did that back in 09, so she had to been like three, almost four. Isn't that sweet? Yeah, she I did was a great job the... of drawing the reindeer on the front. Yeah, and painted it. <laughs> yeah, she, her sister helped her with the hot glue gun. Oh. Um, and I had a little Santa one that I was going to bring, but it had um, it broke as I was putting it on. Oh. But it, too, will just need a hot glue and it'll come back and go. I'll be good. So You look very festive. Well, thank you. Yes. Yeah. Well, when you said you were wearing a suit, we thought we would go classy Christmas you know, yeah. today. <laughs> Well, little classy. did I know that that's what the suit was going to look like. So I'm classy. a little offended. This is classy. <laughs> this is as classy as I get. Classy, classy. Yeah. No, you're 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 sharper than that. Okay, you guys want to know what the today is? <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> I was just, we're gonna I go, really appreciate it. It's going backlash. So what? yeah, so today for um, December 16th, and what is this episode 19? Maybe uh, I know there's a place where that was written somewhere. This yeah. is episode what? twenty. Twenty. It's Ooh. our. Ooh. This is our season finale, is what season it is. Finale. Yes. Yeah. Ooh. Season one finale. What's going to happen? Twenty twenty in the twentieth episode. Plot twist. Whoa. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Ready for backlash day? Today is Barbie Ooh. and Barney okay. backlash. Now, what? I, there is no backlash with me when it comes to Barbies or Barney. I liked both. So, um, as in, Hi, kids. <laughs> you would make a good Barney, Charles. No, you're the big purple friendly dinosaur. Oh man, he now, re- freaked everybody. But out. let's think about last week. He's too happy in awful situations. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever makes him sad. So Get last week, um, Craig's uh, ugly sweater was a T Rex. Barney. Ugly? Yeah, it was a beautiful oh, sweater, classy. Okay, he so Wait, Barney's also a friendly T Rex. So um, I know a lot of parents did not like the songs going around in my house. It was a living Barney show. I we love sang you. everything. We're crossing the street. You know, it's good morning. Everything was sung. Everything. You know what you've done to me now? This, what? The backlash is already happening. The rest <laughs> of my day, I'm going to have Barney in my head. Sorry. I'm going to walk I out of here. Love you. <laughs> you love. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> We're a happy family with a great oh, big Lord. hug and a kiss from me to you. Won't you be? Come on now. It's getting weird. I know. Sorry. Now, Barbie. <laughs> this episode brought to you by. So there's no backlash. Okay, so I'm going to skip that. So no, I like it. Womp womp. Okay, but I love a Barbie. Do you know when they came out? Um, time ago. 1952. Close. 64. 61. Yep. Created the first Mattel. And Barney came out in uh, 87 and went on PBS in 92. So did they both have backlash on the same day? For whatever reason. 50 years later? Yes. Barney backlash. Great. I didn't make it. 
This is the gun one. You see, I brought treasures today. So we have chocolate covered raisins, everybody's favorite cookie when they were a kid, the little fudge stripes. Nice. See, I thought I would. I saw I went, the raisins and I thought National Trail Mix. Today. I went organic and brought some um, chocolate covered blueberries. We have chocolate covered clusters. Are we getting the theme? For for, for a split second something. there, I thought it was going to be fruitcake theme. Mm. No, today is National Chocolate Covered Anything Day. Hey. Anything day. Anything day. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> so look on Craig's face. <laughs> I see the smirk. <laughs> anything. Ask Barney. <laughs> Ask Barney what you can cover in chocolate. Anything. Barney yeah. says anything. <laughs> My favorite thing I've With ever had that was that was not traditional was a potato chip. You ever had a potato chip? I do chocolate? like it's chocolate really covered good. potato chips. Yeah. I've had chocolate covered bacon before. Yeah. Not bad. The salty and the sweet. They have it at uh, Bear City Fudge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. So one other thing I heard on the radio this morning. So um, Chelsea, we'll see if we get it. I, I didn't get it. Um, women are twice as likely to do this at Christmas than men. Twice that as likely. Presence. I was going to say decorate. Yeah. Did you say wrap? Joel? I said wrap yeah. presents. Yeah. Kind of close. Do all the shopping. <laughs> Bingo. Um, <laughs> Some uh, assembly required. <laughs> nope. Regift. Of Ooh, course. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I, I, I'm up for regifting, I like, and I don't mind getting a regift. Yeah. Ooh, we might get a kitty cat jacket. <laughs> I can't. No, I call this. dibs on the kitty cat jacket. <laughs> That's, I do that's like I'm gonna rock Santa this year. There's kind of like a thrill behind it. It's like you get it from someone a couple years ago, and you're like, "Have I used this?" You're like, "This person would love it," and then it's just like, Ooh. "I found four. I'm like, How I do pulled you... out the wrapping, the gift wrap mm-hmm. from Christmas that had been stuck in the attic, and I found four gifts that I would give, and they were still stuck in there. And Michaela pulled up whatever. I was like, "Mom, what the heck?" <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, "That's why it's in that box." <laughs> If you re-gift, don't you run the risk of giving that gift back to no, the person? No, we're smart enough to, to do that. Well, no, because no. then w- women are, I, well, <laughs> are more thoughtful. But it's a, sorry, yeah. So then we know. I know who gives me what gift. So I know. I'm like, well, if someone gives me a gift that I, you know, you know, not that this has happened, say like at work, and then I decide to give a gift to someone, say like one of my friends that lives far away. Like they're never gonna know. When are they ever gonna, you know? Yep. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. Anybody listen? Uh, <laughs> I'm not organized enough to keep up with it one way or the other. I'll either re-gift it to the same person who gave it to me, or I'll just put it in a closet and keep it forever. Gotcha. You could donate it. I could donate it. You could donate it. Speaking of gifting, speaking of donations, we have two amazing guests here today with us. Craig, would you like to introduce them? I love the segue. Yeah, the segue. I gave you the segue. I love the segue. Yes. I thought he was going to do it on the covered by chocolate thing, and then. <laughs> oh, oh shoot! I mm, missed something, but that's okay. You no, want to cover no. people in chocolate? I do. Well, I was going to say, Wait, Char- <laughs> well, Charles, you're you're like you're like milk chocolate, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought of that. But today, I re- I talked to Charles. Charles is the very first Black Santa that Newburn has had. Merry Christmas at the Bear Newburn. Plaza, and yeah. so. Congratulations, Charles. I think that's awesome. And, you know, cover Santa and chocolate. That's fantastic. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Oh. So, <laughs> Merry Christmas. So back to gifting. Perfect the gift of decide. chocolate and the gift of love and the gift of education. And Yeah, friends. so we have great guests today to help yes. with that, right? So we have Charles Wellington, uh, Executive Director of that the Foundation. Guy. Right. <laughs> and then uh, also joining us, we have David McFadden. Mm-hmm. And David, you're the uh, president of the foundation, board president, board president of, the, of our That's foundation right, right now. Yes. Yes. So yes. welcome. Thank you. Thank We're happy to have you all this morning. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Are you ready for some chocolate? I am, and I'm going to take some when I leave. Okay. Nice. We eat on the air, so you can do that. Yeah. I do depend on this for my breakfast every Thursday. So. <laughs> Which one are you going to take with you, you think? Uh, I'm really into those uh, dark chocolate almond roasted almonds. Those nice. are one of my favorite because yeah. it's they're not super sweet. If you actually saw the food at my house, you would see a number of these items. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> super. Yeah. 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 Oh, fantastic. Well, welcome. We're happy to have you all here this morning. So as we get to the end of the year and we're talking about giving, that's one of the reasons we wanted to have you all in here because this is a time when people, they, they're thinking of others. They want to see how they can help their, their fellow man, their fellow person. And one of the ways we do that is, that, is through the foundation at the college, right? Uh, so you want to just talk a little bit about uh, the campaign that we've been running this year, which is the Believe in Tomorrow, Believe in tomorrow. Give Today. Yeah. And uh, yes, our principal function is are providing scholarships so we can make sure those students in need are able to continue their education at the college, whether it's in degree programs or workforce programs. Uh, and there's no question that the better educated citizens we have, the better our community is. 
Uh, so we believe that it is essential that we are in a position to provide those scholarships to needy students. Charles and staff do a great job. Uh, of course, this year, as, uh, as we all know, has been a very difficult year, so the need for us is as great or greater than it ever has been. So we're very excited about our campaign. Our chairs this year are Carol Beckton uh, and Tom Broughton, and they've done a, a tremendous job with the campaign. Uh, we do uh, hope this year to give about $380,000 in scholarships to needy students. Wow, this year? This, this year, year alone? Wow. This fiscal year, and our fiscal mm -hmm. year, of course, runs from uh, July to, to the end of June. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, a substantial amount of those scholarships will come from our endowments, uh, but those endowments are supplemented by our community campaign, mm -hmm. by those in the community who are able and willing to give. And we know a lot of people uh, are involved in end-of-the-year giving for tax purposes or, or other reasons, and we're encouraging those folks who are making those end-of-the-year gifts to consider the scholarship foundation at the community college. That's amazing, $380,000. Yeah. That we have that kind of need at the college, that that many students are find themselves where they need that assistance to be able to get the dream they right. want. And, and Craig, I can say that you know, the need far outstrips that because I have applications that come across. Zomar Peter, who is our dean of students, uh, the students filter through her area and she sends requests up for need, and particularly in the COVID era that we're in right now, so many people have had their jobs cut, their hours cut, they've lost their jobs uh, you know, because of maybe a comprom immune compromised person in the home. They don't feel comfortable working mm -hmm. because they just they just can't you know, get in the whatever particular job they had. And so uh, we're at the position now, and it's it's a really uncomfortable position for me that. I've had to turn down uh, quite a few uh, applications. We're, we're doing as much as we can. But the limiting factor that we have is how much money that we can raise mm -hmm. for scholarships. That's the only limiting factor we have. There's still need out there uh, from the students. Mm -hmm. And what the foundation needs and what David was alluding to just then was we need those funds to come in so that we can pass them right along to Foundation doesn't take a cut off of those if you designate your funds for the foundation. That money goes straight to student scholarships. And I think something that needs to be said is that a lot of times these scholarships aren't um, directly paid to tuition. Sometimes it's the need to get an appliance so they can work remotely. Maybe it's they, um, they don't have the gas money and you help them with a couple gas cards so they can get through the month. So people need to understand that that dollar amount that they, they're ready to give doesn't just go to tuition. It's what? really to help the person yeah. in their, to kind of navigate and journey through their education process, right? You know, one of my favorites, and this has happened more than once, are those who just need a bicycle to be mm -hmm. able to get to campus. Mm -hmm. You know, we, yeah. we have very limited or non-existent public transportation in our community. So these are folks, these are citizens of our area who want to get educated in some field not just necessarily a degree program, uh, but also workforce programs. And they are driven enough to make that extra effort to try to get that education, but some of them have a need, and these scholarships can fill that need and enable them to get that degree, uh, that workforce uh, certificate, and be a better citizen and contribute to the community. So this is money that when given, as, as Charles said, this doesn't pay salaries. This doesn't pay overhead. This money that's donated goes directly back to scholarships, directly to students at Craven, uh, who then benefit and benefit the community. Well, it's neat that you brought up the the, um, the bicycle because mm -hmm. just a few weeks ago we did have a young man who was having to walk to, to school every single day, mm -hmm. and somebody brought it to their attention, and we had an outside agency that donated money to right. specifically buy his bicycle and all the accoutrements. And um, and I have I have preached from the top of the highest mountain we can find that the foundation is an amazing steward of this money to make sure that it is properly used. And Charles, we know that I have been my family has been on the reciprocating end as we lost everything in Florence and including cars and bicycles and the house and and you personally went out to Walmart and bought my daughter a bike so she could get to yeah. class. So I don't know. Chelsea I didn't, didn't know, know that. that. She's going to cry. It uh -huh. was. So yeah. she did. I mean, she, she somebody, Zomar came to her and says, what can we do for you? And she's like, 
we have one car, you know, and yeah. dad's working and drops mom off at the at the college, but I have to get back and forth. So you did. You went out and bought her a helmet and the blinky lights and all the safety stuff we needed. So right. again, personal. I can tell you it was used properly. <laughs> and, and on the most recent, it's, it's not always money because in the most recent bicycle, it was one that was – uh, an individual that won the bicycle in a drawing from a bike club, oh. and they wanted to find a student. The word came to me, so I immediately went in, again, uh, pairing with Zomar, mm-hmm. um, who's the dean of students, <laughs> and said, Zomar, this opportunity exists, and we matched the organization with. So there are so many ways that you can help out, and the individual that got that bicycle was walking back and forth. He was a, a student uh, at the college, and not only that, but a work study student. Yeah. So he was working at the college as well, and was tra- was going back mm-hmm. and forth, walking each day. And in the rain, in the cold, it didn't matter. Uh, he showed up and was very diligent being there. So it's exciting that that, that kind of dedication you want to yeah. you want to yeah. give by merit. That is one thing that, when it comes to giving and 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 contributing for the students, it really is for the students. It's not theoretical, right? These are lives that are changing. These are people that you're helping. And I know for you, David, it, the connection to the students is not just theoretical because you've actually been through one of our programs most recently, right? I've like, actually been a student at Craven. That's right. Yeah. So people see you in a sheriff's uniform this morning and they be, may be wondering what that connection is. Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Uh, when I retired from my law practice and went to work with the sheriff's office with Chip Hughes, I was required to go through the basic law enforcement training program mm-hmm. at the college, which is a 664-hour program. Oh, yes, I was the most senior student. In the class. <laughs> I think the average age was about 25, but we had a great time. The yeah. classroom part was very interesting. The physical fitness part was a little tough, but <laughs> sure. But I survived. But and, and I will tell you, having uh, been in the court system for 41 years, the district attorney that I retired from, working with law enforcement officers, I was actually very impressed with the program. Mm-hmm. I really was. I thought that uh, it, it certainly exceeded my expectations. Not that I didn't think it was a good program. But that's just one example of giving citizens in the community opportunity to obtain the skill sets, the certification, the qualifications they need to get a good job and uh, begin a career. Mm -hmm. So that's one example of many. And, of course, I'm a big fan of the workforce programs that we have at the college because I hear from my friends who have businesses and own businesses that they need people with skill sets that we are providing. And these scholarships help provide those skill sets that provide the workers for the businesses in our communities. Yeah, that's a great point because a lot of people might think that the only way to get a scholarship is through if you're going to get a two-year degree and transfer or something along those lines, but there are workforce development scholarship opportunities as well. Absolutely. In fact, um, just this week I've signed up, registered for uh, welding, nighttime welders, and they're all, they're all active duty right now, so they can, I think, love the fact that they're committed to come at night and actually yeah. – get an extra training and, and, and stay welding. in the community, which I love. You know, once yeah. they're connected, they're, they stay. Yeah, and welding is a great example. Um, I know when we say workforce development, not everybody knows what that means. So, uh, Charles, do you want to talk about some of the scholarships that we have given in workforce development or some of those programs? Sure. No, I think the other Charles should do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things, and it's probably a, a good point we need to make as a distinction when we talk about workforce development and curriculum, and when you talk about welding, you can come to Craven and get a two-year degree mm-hmm. in welding, and there's a certificate program, and then there's the workforce development. Workforce development is typically shorter-run classes, and those shorter-run classes are designed to give, the, as David was saying, that individual the skill sets they need to work in it, uh, where the two-year degree gives a lot of the Englishes, and, and so you kind of makes them a more rounded uh, educationally uh, with what they're doing in their career. But with workforce development, when you stop and think that uh, a HVAC, uh, air conditioning, heating, or electrical, or plumbing, a little over $200 puts a student through that workforce development training program. Mm -hmm. And with that, what the foundation has teamed up with uh, a number of partners, one recently was the Home Builders Association, which uh, sponsored scholarships for those in those fields because home builders, they, as, again, as David was saying, they, they saw the need for those construction workers, the electrical workers, the plumbers. And typically what we do, we work with Margaret Chance, who sort of sees the financial end within workforce development. And 
we'll put two hundred dollars in, and then the student matches that with twenty five or thirty dollars, mm-hmm. and that gives the student with a little skin in the game, uh, so that they're showing up. Obviously, there are some students that that can't come up with twenty twenty five dollars, and with those students, then there's other funds available that that can give them a, a full scholarship in there. Those students are vetted. Margaret spends some time talking with them. And once you get through the application process and spend some time with them, you, you can see those individuals that are really desiring to come out and, and, and better themselves. And we do everything we can with those students to, to try and help them out. And the, uh, another good example is the automotive mechanic program. Uh, I was surprised. I had a, a friend who's in that business tell me that they have graduates of our program making more than $60,000 a year just uh, having participated in the training that we provide at the college. So, and our nursing program is a tremendous example of how the investments through scholarships stay here. You know, the majority of our graduates go to work with our local hospital and the the related uh, medical offices and uh, most of the others stay in Craven County. So uh, these scholarships really provide, they, they generate, they just come back to the citizens here multiple times. So let's not forget to tell people how they can contribute to the scholarships if they'd like to. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you have any questions, you can call the college. Just look up the main number for the college. Holly will drop it in Facebook for us, too. She'll, she'll okay. link us up. She's yeah. good at and that. Thank you, Holly. This is what I love about Holly. She's in the comment section. So as you're talking, I'm trying to pull up websites, but she's putting it in the comment section, and then I can hit a button, and boom, it's on the screen. He's awesome. Oh, <laughs> love Holly. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, Charles. That's fine. You, you, can call the, you can call the college and just ask to speak, somebody, to, speak to somebody in the foundation. Just say, that, that guy I saw on the podcast, can you, can you connect me to him in the foundation, mm-hmm. and they'll get you over to my office. If not, any of the staff there can direct you where you need to go. Also, you can go online. You can go to the main college website, which is for Craven. And once you get to the college website, there's a little clink link at the top that says foundation. Drill into the foundation, and you can, you can figure out how to make a pledge to the foundation there as well. Again, I'm always available if anybody wants to talk about a scholarship. Uh, and this is probably a good place to, to segue into uh, in looking at endowments mm-hmm. and plan giving uh, as we come to the end of the year. A lot of people evaluate uh, what their plans are moving forward, and uh, maybe they have someone in mind. Uh, recently, uh, with I'd say within the last three months, we established two new endowments for people that were recently deceased. Uh, one, uh, the individual's son wanted to uh, create an endowment uh, in memory of his father, and that was uh, uh, military stem based mm-hmm. so as we talk about that we can we can focus in if you've got a specific need that resonates with you or maybe the loved one you're thinking about remembering we can set up a an endowment or a scholarship specifically for that need like a a former military and we and we typically go with honorably discharged and and I'm, I'm not sure the form there there's a D12 or whatever. D214. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I got that one, Charles. Yeah, didn't I? <laughs> you got, you got, I don't know what the forums are, but, but the, uh, anyway, uh, Anne is pursuing a STEM mm-hmm. uh, degree. So we can, we can get focused li- with, with that type, type of precision yeah. in that. Because there are several scholarships that are really specific to what a program somebody's looking for, which. Yes. Which can make it a little less competitive for you too, right? Make, makes more options available for different people. Right, and 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 some of them. Uh, another recent one we had was an individual whose mother had recently uh, passed away, and he said, "You know, my mother charged me uh, in her last days to make sure that I set up this endowment uh, at the college." She came through the college in the, and I don't, I'm not going to go with years because I don't recall but some years ago in the LPN program, Mm -hmm. and she was a non-traditional student. She had stayed home. She had raised her family and then came into the educational field. And she wanted, and she knew what a struggle she had as a non-traditional student coming back in and trying to make ends meet with the children. And so she said, uh, she charged her son and her son set up an endowment for her mother for someone in the nursing field. That was a non-traditional student. Again, it's a person that 
is is not just <clears throat> right out of high school, but mm -hmm. uh, is, is coming in as a, a little later in life, and we can set that up as well. Of course, some people just say, hey, I'd like to establish a scholarship, and it really doesn't matter how that scholarship goes. I just want to help a student out wherever the need is. And with all of those scholarships, the role the foundation plays is we raise the funds, and then we kind of contact financial aid, anybody mm -hmm. that's looking for assistance. If you think there's a barrier for you coming to school, stop in at, financial, at the financial aid office at the college and talk to them. We've mm -hmm. got, as David was saying, we're hoping to give out <coughs> $380,000 this year in scholarships. Yep. So speaking of other ways to give, um, and you were talking about an endowment and a specific scholarship, was the Alara Wiggs Scholarship. Right. And she was a certified medical assistant, and she came through our program. And they are offering a, a light show uh, here in New Bern, which I think is fantastic. It's at 2917 Roanoke Avenue. And we've got some slides for there's the, um, there's the address. And the family put up this beautiful light show in um, honor of their mother and wife and Anybody who comes by and loves it, if they donate, um, that money comes directly back to the foundation. So mm -hmm. it's really exciting. I actually got goosebumps when you pop, yeah. pu pulled up the picture. Yeah. I think it's really, Aww. really special. Because I think they've got the neighbors involved in it now they as have. well. Yeah, yeah. I, I rode by and it's, uh, they've done a great job. Yeah. And it is a drive-by. Yes, so it people, is. And I'm sure you could park up the street and walk and that kind of stuff. Of course, mm -hmm. we want you to be safe. But there it is, um, a drive-by. and. But I, I think it's fabulous. And so, again, is there a drop-off box in the there yard? There is, in the yard. Okay. Yeah, it, the, yeah, and the, the drop box is located in the yard sort of up close to the porch. So you, you might have to do a little investigating to get out and, and walk to, okay. to find it. Go through it. the winter wonderland. Yeah. Of the and lights. and <laughs> in, interestingly enough, uh, with that, we were just contacted recently by a group of certified medical assistants uh, at Carolina East uh, medical systems, uh, health systems there that was wanting to pool some funds together and wanted to make a donation and were asking how to do that. So they contact the foundation. We said, sure, just, you know, and said, well, we may not be able to get by. And I said, you know, we can, you can just send the money to us and we'll make sure it gets into the Laura Wig scholarship. And also with that, that, that scholarship was originally established when, uh, unfortunately, Miss Wiggs passed away. Uh, she had a, a a battle of disease there that uh, that took her out and her family wanted to uh, remember her and they made a contribution that established that scholarship fund mm -hmm. and that's going to be helping to pay for certified medical assistance once they get through the program there's a state licensure that they have to take and a lot of students when they get through they just don't have the funds to pay for that and those students that are finding themselves in a financial band, uh, bind these monies are going to be there to help them uh, as far as we can. Again, we talk about we can assist only to the point that we have the funds in there. And with the, with those funds, we can, we can, we're going to assist some of those assistant students. That's fantastic. So I, I know we uh, are going to have to switch gears a little bit uh, to bring in our next guest, but I just wanted to thank you for coming and remind folks uh, <laughs> like we have up on the screen, if they want to contribute to this campaign, believe in tomorrow, give today, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Craig, you have to sing that. You have, have to, to sing in Barney style. In tomorrow. What style? In Barney style. Oh, Barney and friends. <laughs> Believe in tomorrow. Give today. <laughs> Here oh. I Woo, he am just went down. That was awful. What are you saying? I can't sing. Um, no, I didn't. Was I a little flat? No. <laughs> No. Very loud, but most I, of it was the jazz. Your face says that was the worst singing I've ever heard. Greg. I was just, no, was it was nice. great. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was wonderful. Make it No. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. I'm not singing his tears. The no. But you know what, David? We are so glad you came out today. Thank you for. It's certainly my pleasure. Thank, thank you for you. serving on the board. We know that you've got um, so many hats that you do wear in this community. So we're grateful to have your experience and your wisdom as part of the foundation. And I know that you're a big fan of these dark chocolate covered um, almonds. And so today is c cover everything in chocolate day. So we are going to fill a cup up for you to take on the road. How does could, that sound? Could I have some of those blackberries also, please? Blueberries. <laughs> <laughs> have the chocolate blueberries as well. Yeah, we'll make you a little trail mix, a chocolate covered trail mix. How does that sound? Very nice. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. My no, pleasure thank to you. be here. Thank, and do we thank have, you so much. Are we going to a, a quick No, I, I was just going to read a couple of the stats okay. that, that Charles had brought while um, our next guest comes in. Yeah. yeah. So uh, – just a couple of things I thought were pretty interesting here. Um, so in the community campaign that we were just talking about, 
you've raised $42,000 since when the campaign kicked off. And there have been over 275 students that have received scholarships since the start of the fiscal year in July 2020. Wow. Uh, as we said before, the fiscal year foundation goal is to award over $380,000 in scholarships. It's a number so big, I can't even fit it in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and the total includes over $160,000 from endowments. That's amazing how much work is getting done and, and the generosity of our community a to help our students. Absolutely. Uh, when you when you look at those numbers and and also one of the major factors in there as well that we need to mention is the Bait Foundation, the Harold H. Bait uh, Foundation is a major contributor to scholarships uh, annually. Uh, they've been very generous, one hundred and ten thousand dollars this year that they're offering in scholarships for students uh, at Craven Community College. So we're so excited to partner with them and and partner with others in the community. We mentioned the uh, Home Builders Association that we're working with and, and the individuals that make their contributions as well. And the foundation is uh, loosely involved uh, with some other funding that's out there. When you look at the American Red Cross grant that went for workforce development, that was actually a grant that was sort of passed through for the foundation that, that came in to assist those workforce development students. And uh, you know, anywhere that we can help out, uh, Chelsea with the food pantry, yes. you know that the, the foundation is working really hard uh, looking for grant opportunities. And we've partnered mm. with International Paper, who has been ve very generous with that. We also uh, did an application for the, the city of New Bern yes. mm -hmm. with the, and I can't remember the, the granting source for that, uh, with the, with the, it was. I mean, it's a COVID emergency grant. It, it, the it, was, city. it was a yes. COVID emergency grant that was administered mm -hmm. uh, by an agency through the city of New Bern. Uh, very generous, helping out nonprofits, and there were a number of nonprofits in the area that that benefited from that. We chose to take that money because we looked at what was available and where the need was, and we said probably at this point, Chelsea mm -hmm. was saying the food pantry was really getting a hit there, so we. And especially, yeah, especially with the holidays right now, we've gotten, which is great, we've been able to help so many students thanks to those grants that we've gotten. And um, actually tomorrow is one of my big shopping days where I'm going to go try to get a bunch of things to refill it just to do one last push before we go, you know, for the holidays. So it's great. And, and through, through the foundation in the last 30 days, we have been able to put $3,500 in there. Mm -hmm. the, the third uh, partner in that was an individual, Dr. David Hurst. Mm -hmm who is uh, one of the founders of, uh, he along with his, uh, his wife, Anna, who founded the Hearst Ambassadors. And he heard about the food pantry and said, I want to help out. And he was very generous as well with the food pantry. And even our, it's the Craven County Independence, it, Independent Insurance, Insurance Agents Thank Association. You. Yes. Who they have the longest name. <laughs> but they gave, a, they gave us a nice donation as well, just right. as one of their, mm. every year they try to give back in different ways and, you know, that's where they saw the need as well. So we're very, very lucky to have those partners. And along with the Craven County Independent Insurance Agents <laughs> Association. So nice. That well done. Good. You like that? <laughs> uh, they are. Here's, here's a segue here. <laughs> they are always very generous with the Community Fabric Awards. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, they are a sponsor annually with the Community Fabric Awards. And speaking and of Community Fabric Awards, we have Ann Schnout <laughs> here with us today who's going to share with us what how the the face of the community fabric awards had changed a little bit this spring and mm -hmm. um and then how you guys are moving forward to next spring and coming I mean, i'm just excited so january and then april and all that kind of stuff yeah. so and thanks for being here welcome welcome Thank you i'm happy to be here at chocolate covered day <laughs> chocolate covered anything day i mean those, those every day is chocolate covered you day should have been here when we had cheese curd day <laughs> oh yeah that was a fun morning <laughs> that, was, that, was a good one. that one still sticks out of my mind a lot. There are so many good days. <laughs> <laughs> so normally we have a kickoff in January for the CFA, and then we have the CFA at the end of April. And it's a very well-attended uh, event. It's a lot of fun. It's high energy. Well, COVID just kind of bursts that balloon completely. And last year we had to cancel the event mm -hmm. for safety and health. So this year we decided to be safe and helpful again, 
and we decided that we would do a virtual kickoff. So we are going to have a kickoff January 14th with a drive-through of the Vault Center to introduce the community not only to the CFA, but the Vault Center. So you can come through. There's a map that you can follow. We've got that up on the screen now. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can drive through, and if you are a previous sponsor, you will be invited to attend. But we'd love anybody that wants to come through. And if they want to pick up a packet for sponsorship, we'll have one of those there too. <laughs> and cause speaking of sponsorships, I'm going to pull this up. This is another great prop we have. And I'll put it between Chelsea and I. Can you see that? This Very is, nice. So when you become a sponsor, you get to put this yard sign. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. Oh, do 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 Oh. You don't. You like that screen better than me holding it up. <laughs> I'm floundering over here. I mean, we could watch you do this a little more. You gotta turn it. To, keep coming. Yeah, come, come to the it. left. Yeah. Left. Oh, other way. Other way. Oh, My, uh, th th there you go. Keep, keep going. going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. There you. <laughs> now move. Now lean your head out to the side. <laughs> now go outside and spin it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll, like. Yeah, come on to the bagel shop. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, yeah, so sponsors get these wonderful yard signs as well. So they tell will. And some other Craven swag, too, when they're coming through. I'm sorry, what? Craven swag, some Craven giveaways. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you have been a previous sponsor, we will have a little gift for you when you go through the drive through So we're hoping you'll come, you'll learn about the Vault Center, and you'll pick up your, your packet for sponsorship. And if you've been a previous sponsor, you can pick up your gift. Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about um, what you did since we couldn't have the banquet to honor the last recipients and those winners. We really had to do a lot of thinking because normally the winners are feted at the CFA. They speak for a few minutes and they're given their award. Well, that didn't happen this year. So instead, we decided to make videos of the three recipients. And we have three wonderful recipients and three fantastic videos. So should we start with our first recipient? I think, Absolutely. Chelsea, you're going to read yes. about Miss Ethel. I'm up. All right. So Miss Ethel Sampson, Award for Individual Leadership. So at 88 years old, Ethel is a longtime resident of the community. She was born in Pollocksville, but has lived in New Bern since she was three. At the, she saw the end of the Great Depression, as well as the arrival of World War II and Cherry Point. From her porch, she has watched the sunset on segregation and the Jim Crow days and saw her husband, Johnny Sampson Jr., win the race for county commissioner, a post he held until recently passing. Both Ethel and her husband received the Order of the Longleaf Pine, North Carolina's highest recognition to its residents. Ethel's acute awareness and nurturing heart make her a true leader that helps hold that helps to hold the fabric of our community together. And now we have a video. We do. Yeah. About Miss Ethel Sampson. What keeps you driven? God. <laughs> the life I live speaks for me. If you if you do right, you have to worry about anything. If you do wrong, that's when you got to worry. <laughs> I know it's important because I grew up under, under that administration, under my father, and he believed that we needed to do things that we should do, and that's the reason I grew up in him, and I'm just like him. You gotta have some sense for yourself and think for yourself. That's our problem. What, what really impresses me mostly is the Masonic Theater, still downtown, and believe it or not, no black people could go down to the Masonic Theater, but the maids could go down there with the children. Now that, that's the most impressive thing is still in my mind that I enjoyed. Because we could go any, any day, we go down there, sit where we want to sit. Wow. I'll never forget that. Everything that they saw, we saw. Oh. It, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's amusing, you know, because we could sit there, we, we feel very important. And we'd be sitting with the, with the, with the children, and, and they were just like they were our children, really. Yeah. You used to take care of people that had AIDS, AIDS patients, before anybody even understood how it was transmitted. Did that scare you or make you no. nervous? No, no, because even when I grew up with a mother and father that believe in things like that, and, and that just seemed natural because mom always say, say, mom, say, sister, somebody got to do it. I've been on the prison board for years. 
I was a, uh, appointed by Lieutenant Beverly Perdue years ago. But the thing about um, the prison camp, they, they used to have a black prison camp out there where the, where the hospital is now. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we used to, for some reason or another, I had a best friend, Mammy, called her Mammy. And we used to go every day, we go out there and see the people to the prison camp. And we take things to them, even though you weren't supposed to, but they let us do it. We, see, we, we could cook. I always could cook, <laughs> and I, I could make cakes and, and cookies and things. And they didn't even mind them. They didn't mind us taking things to them. And see, that would be important because those people, you wouldn't in those days. You you cannot realize how sad those you know, those black people were. That they were really suffering, and they needed some love, and we gave them love. You know, seeing that video, I, it makes me wish that even more that we had been able to have the actual Fabric Awards this year. You know, I personally have not been able to meet Miss Ethel yet, uh, but her interview, her story is just so inspiring. And uh, I hope that at, at least some people can see the video that we have here to get a little glimpse of, of what they might have gotten during the Fabric Awards. But she just seems like an incredible asset to our community and, and well-deserved to get the award. You know, she's got... Um, I can't remember. It's like seven children. Is that right? Anne? Eight children. Eight wow. children. And two and, fosters. And then she's wow. got um, like a huge tribe of grandchildren and great grandchildren and and great great grandchildren. And her daughter. You use the right word, tribe. Tribe. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And her daughter brought her to the interview, and um, and she had recently recovered from COVID, and she was still weak, but she mm -hmm. it, it was like once you she asked tell the first the question, she just burst it out. You could yeah. just see the shine come out. And the part that I loved at the end, um, you know, we talked a little bit about her faith. You know, she's a pastor as well. And her, I asked if she would give us some grace. And she she asked her daughter to step in and do this prayer. And it was amazing. Charles was there. Anne was there. And, I mean, I just sat there just in awe of listening to this woman and how she had shared her faith down to this, the family mm -hmm. and through, but also she lived it in the community. She that part. Yes. Yeah. She it lived wasn't just the, yeah, she sharing. She lived the gospel. I mean, mm -hmm. she did. And she, she did. leads by example. Yes. Exactly. So we've got two more wonderful award winners. Craig, I think yep. you're going to share our next one, right? Yes. Yes. So uh, the next uh, recipient that we're going to uh, recognize today is uh, the Newburn Sun Journal and Mr. Chris Siegel, executive editor. And the Sun Journal has won the award for business leadership. So, as the region's go-to source for local news since 1876, the Sun Journal has guided its readers over a century by offering extensive, comprehensive coverage on a variety of topics, including sports, education, politics, and business. But more than that, they are a constant source of communication that holds the Craven County community together. Chris Siegel, executive editor, is proud to manage a newspaper that is the community's primary source of local news, keeping readers abreast with current events and topics ranging from elementary school honor roll lists and church bake sales to presidential elections and global pandemics. The Sun Journal has a long history of interacting with the community and working with nonprofit organizations through sponsorships and spotlighting local events. In recent years, they have taken significant steps to go beyond just being an informational outlet to finding ways to engage with those nonprofits and with their readers. What was the staff's reaction when they found out the Sun Journal was going to be recognized? The initial reaction was, who's going to write the story if we're the story? <laughs> <laughs> of course. One of the great things about our business is that whenever you're around town, you always run to someone who says, I worked at the Sun Journal back in the 70s or in the 80s, or I started there as a reporter, or I started there in advertising. Uh, we've been around for 100 plus years, uh, shining a light on the community. Um, if you think of us like the newspaper, you're kind of missing the scope of what we do. We care about local news, local content, local people, things that impact local lives. At the end of the day, our mission is that we want to help people understand what's important in their community and what they need to know. We're there to inform people. So the Sun Journal has changed a lot over the years and will continue to change and grow and evolve. And we've learned uh, through research locally, through research nationally, through partnering with the USA Day Network, um, that local readers care about impactful journalism that they can use um, and that is in-depth. So we've really been transitioning over the last couple years to focus on digital in-depth coverage. 
the print product still serves an important function. That's not really our my primary focus. It's not the print product. It's on creating good local journalism that will lead to people wanting to subscribe and support us. We are interested in long-term commitments and having value for our readers and being able to show them the value. And there's a lot of value in the engagements and church and other things. And if you're a, a casual viewer who gets it one time, you might not know some of this content. But it's about understanding the mission of the nonprofit and how do we tell that story in a meaningful way to actually engage readers who didn't know because they don't necessarily care about going to a sock hop on a Saturday night. <laughs> but they care about literacy in Crane County and the impact that literacy has on our constituency and on our elections and on our education system. So how do we leverage our skills as being storytellers to help the nonprofits get their stories out there in appropriate ways? You know, New Bern's a unique market with the nonprofit council. We have so many active nonprofits we all know about. Uh, we have great partnerships with the community college. Our 20 under 40 event, the college, it pairs well. And so understanding the business in our community has allowed us to, when we have something like 20 under 40, we can go to the, the community college and say, hey, we have this thing that we think we want to do. It honors young people. It ties in really well with education and advancing your career. Will you partner with us on this? Let's work together on it so it can be beneficial for everyone. That was awesome. I'm so glad uh, Chris was able to be there and, and to receive the award for the Sun Journal. Um, I also want to do a little shout out. Um, Jim Congleton, he is actually watching on the share party with us right now. He's one of our past recipients, and he's also yes, he a huge philanthropic donor for the foundation. So we want to thank him for his continuing support as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got our last recipient for this the 2020 uh, CFA Awards, and that was for Award for Leadership in Education. Uh, Ms. Deborah Longhan, she was the Chief Academic Officer at Craven County Schools. And I say was because she retired. <laughs> Yay for Deborah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah Longhans began her career as a math teacher at West Craven High School after graduating from East Carolina University. Go Pirates! Go Eagles! In 1989. <laughs> um, she maintained a keen appreciation for the importance of Craven County's teachers ever since Deborah was inspired by her own positive school experience and the powerful impact that teachers had on her over the years. She recognizes that many individuals have played important roles in her success, and she strives to do the same for her students. Over her 31-year career, ah, 31 years, good for you for retiring, um, <laughs> Deborah has witnessed firsthand the seismic changes that have transformed the face of education. While she believes that technology certainly has its place in modern day education, she, in modern day education, she also strongly believes that it can't replace quality instruction and that the best resource will always be teachers in the classroom. Amen. We've got a short video from Ms. Deborah Longhans. I think that public education is the foundation of our society. Well, my entire educational career uh, has been with Craven County Schools. Back in the spring of 1989, I was sent to West Craven High School um, as a student teacher for mathematics and I uh, had a wonderful experience there. The um, faculty, math faculty was very supportive um, to me as a new uh, educator coming into the profession and uh, I was fortunate enough to be hired at the end of that semester for a full-time position there at West Craven High. So I uh, was a math teacher uh, in that school for 14 years and then decided to pursue school administration. Uh, so I have served uh, Craven County Schools as an assistant principal, a school principal, the director of secondary education, and then um, my final position with the school system was chief academic officer. Um, this past uh, August 1st uh, was after 31 years, uh, the date I chose for retirement. Um, it was a bittersweet decision to make. I think any educator will tell you what they miss when they leave the classroom is their day in and day out uh, connection with students. Um, it's not about necessarily the content that you're teaching them, but sometimes the life skills and the impact that you have on them becoming um, adults as well as good citizens. Uh, I run into former students a lot uh, when I'm in and about New Bern. Um, after you've taught so many years, <laughs> your uh, the collection of those you've taught grows and, and 
it's really neat to see what they're doing with their lives, uh, the difference that they're making uh, with their own families and their own community. Um, and so, you know, what you miss when you leave the classroom certainly is that day in and day out connection with students. I think that it's been very important that we personalize education for our students and we, that, that we allow them opportunities to pursue what their goals are uh, post high school. And the community college here has made that so easy for Craven County Schools. Through the dual enrollment, through the uh, creation of our two early colleges, you know, that we have, students are able to really think about what they want to do beyond high school and those options are available for them. A, a lot of what our um, young people need is stability. And, um, you know, so I do encourage um, young professionals, young educators to, um, you know, recognize that that is one of the uh, true gifts we have about the profession that we've chosen and to, you know, to stay grounded and make yourself part of that uh, community that you teach in because you will make uh, an impact far greater than you uh, recognize and sometimes it, you don't recognize it for several years, but it, it does come full circle and it's um, one of the great rewards that we have. I'm not sure if you noticed, um, but in the, sitting next to their chair was each individual uh, piece of artwork, and that was their award. So I can't remember the artist. Charles, can you do you remember the artist's name? I, I don't recall the artist's name, but each year it was local. It was a local local artist. Mm -hmm. Each year we designate a local artist to uh, commission. We commission a an artwork mm -hmm. specifically for each of the recipients. It, one year, it, well, last year it was carving, wood carving, mm -hmm. which was very nice. In the past, it's been woven fabric design. It's been a number of different things over the years, but it's each year it's, it's not just a plaque or a, a, a statue. It's a, it is a work of art, which it is adds beautiful. to the community. And I'm glad program. you were able to yeah. do that again this year. I know so many parts of the Fabric Awards were different this year. We couldn't have it the way we wanted, to, but at least we could ha at least have the awards and and do something to recognize our recipients. Yes. yes. So, Anne, tell us a little bit more about the um, virtual events coming up and how people can participate. Okay. Um, we are going to do something different for the CFA this year to keep everybody healthy and safe. We're going to have a virtual CFA as well, and it will be a broadcast presentation. And the best part of the whole deal is we open up nominations for the CFA 2021 today. So you can go online and get your nomination in. It's very easy to do and very friendly. Um, again, the kickoff is the 14th. The CFA is the 24th of April. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. I, it, I've said it so many times, and so now I can't remember it. 19th of April. 19th. 20th of April. 20th of April. <laughs> This is so, a test. I wasn't prepared. I'm sorry. I would have studied more. Yes. That's all right. I throw those out all the time. <laughs> if you would like to be part of the CFA and be a sponsor, there's several things you can do. If you're a platinum sponsor, that's the $3,000 level. You will receive a 20-second pre-recorded commercial message during our broadcast event. If you decide to be a diamond sponsor, that's the $5,000 level. You will receive a 30-second pre-recorded commercial <laughs> message during the broadcast event. But if that's not what you need to do, there are sponsorship levels for all budgets, starting with friends at $100. And I know that um, I just showed this yard site again, because again, sponsors will get this for their business or for their front yard. Will. And so that's another way to, again, show your um, connection with the college. So we're grateful for that. Charles, I know you've shared in the past that it's not about the dollar amount. So every dollar counts. If you can't even make that friend up to that hundred, a five dollar donation. It all will go a hundred percent of it goes back into that student. Well, when we when we talk about uh, giving, if you whatever amount you give, if you want to just not participate in the CFA, but just make a scholarship pledge, certainly yes. do that. Certainly, uh, you can make a contribution. Either online, you can mail a check, 800 College Court, Newburn 28562. You can give me a call. I'll run by and pick it up. Uh, socially distanced. One of the things that's kind of COVID has brought on 
is sometimes in signing things, I'll, I'll call people up and we'll do drive-by signings. Uh, I did a, a drive-by signing on, a, on, on an agreement where the individual just kind of pulled up in front of the building. I came out with a clipboard <laughs> and said, here, and they signed, and you just kind of rolled down their window and signed and then drove off. So we'll, we'll do if, if you need me to come to your house and pick up the check, uh, you know, you can <laughs> you can leave it leave it under a rock on your front porch and tell me where it is and give me your address and I'll swing by and pick that up. We would love to do that because yes. we really work hard to do everything we can. Make sure you let your neighbors know so strange Charles isn't showing up <laughs> creeping around your yard. Now, wait a second, I, I would be respectful. I'm not wearing the uh, <laughs> colorful <laughs> jacket. There. That would be a... <laughs> You, you're wearing your Jerry Garcia Christmas tie, right? Let's give that a moment. Let everybody see. So very festive. Yes. And then I believe you promised us all that you were going to sing a Grateful Dead song. Is that what I heard? I th- well, I you know, I'm looking at the time. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know, well, Grateful you know, Dead songs tend to be a little longer. We would have had to have started at the beginning of the we show. Probably yeah. should have started yeah. a little yes. earlier to get that in. So somehow, somehow it doesn't surprise me that Charles is a deadhead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, listen, let's let's um, let's go back to believe in tomorrow and give today. So um, which I back to the gifts, though, and I mean, we're all festive. Let's remember during this time, I think in the last eight, nine months, we've all realized that a lot of the things aren't real important. So instead of giving somebody a gift wrapped under the under the tree, consider your end of gift or your Christmas gift being a donation to the foundation and give that gift of education for those that don't have it. Right. And Megan, one of the things that I've, I've been seeing as a trend that will come up to the end of the year, people who have not taken vacations or not done things and they find out they've got that little extra money in their budget. And they've said, well, you know what? I want to find something to do with this that is meaningful. And if you find yourself in that situation, certainly a meaningful gift is to make that contribution for a student, if you'd like to designate it for a particular area, that's fine. Or if you just want to say, find that student in need, financial the financial aid office will do that. We communicate with them and they find that student. That's fantastic. So, Anne, we're so grateful you came in and talked to us about how we're going to make the Fabric Awards exciting. You also, I know yesterday when you and I spoke, um, one of the things that you had recommended is if you've nominated a wonderful leader in the past and they just the nomination yes. themselves is is a winner. I mean, that is that's mm-hmm. amazing. We also know that people that are leaders in the community don't usually stop being leaders, so they are still mm-hmm. doing wonderful things. Exactly, so, renominate. Yeah, them. renominate them, and you know, and have that um, that collaboration for the community and that support for that individual exactly. or that business. So don't forget about that, and don't assume that somebody else has nominated them already. That's another good thing. Yep. Yes, it never hurts mm-hmm. to make the nomination. Yeah, and, and each year we, we go back up. So if someone has been nominated, as we said many times before, just resubmit that nomination, put it in, put it in the running for the, yeah. for the current uh-huh. year. And just as a reminder, the three categories that are available for recipients are? Individual leadership, education, and business. Very good. Very good. So, Charles, we are wrapping up. 2020. With Which her. Charles? Yeah, I was going to say the same <laughs> my, thing. My chocolate Santa. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to tune no, out and no, I'm going to be no, playing. A, put that underneath your name now. I'm yeah, yeah. the Grateful yeah. Dead yeah. tune. No, in my head I'm going to go to the chocolate Santa and um and hey, thank you. You have been a huge asset for us coming together, Chelsea and Craig and I. And I tell people all the time that Thursday morning is the highlight of my week. Yay. And I love coming in and laughing and never knowing what's going to happen. And and again, guys, this is unscripted. <laughs> so you may not know that, but <laughs> welcome cry, to our baby. world. No crying. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so next week uh, we'll be in the thick of, of Christmas. It'll be Christmas. So Merry Thanks. Christmas to everybody. Charles, I think you're putting together a best of. Is that right? I am. Yeah. I am. It'll be so, for our January show. The best of. So I'm kind of scared what best of he's going to pull oh, out. Oh, I can already Craig. think of so many clips. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm kind of a little concerned about that. We're going to have to have a talk. <laughs> so I'm going to want to see that before we go on. <laughs> no, I think I think Chelsea's clips specifically are going to be just a total surprise mm. just to get the reactions that she there makes. There you go. Well, yeah. I've got my facial expressions to never fail you, what? Charles. What? <laughs> Bird hit. No. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, Craig, you have anything you want to share at the very end um, before we go off? In your best Barney voice. Well, I'm not going to sing any more Barney because that was okay. definitely a dud. Nobody liked that. <laughs> uh, but I am, uh, although I enjoy doing the show every week, I'm looking forward to us having a Christmas break, mm-hmm. celebrating Christmas with friends and family. I hope all of you get to do the same. 
Uh, I know one of my new favorite things is taking walks down Canterbury Road and looking at the lights. If you have not done that yet this year, please do. If you're Beautiful. driving, please drive carefully. Drive slowly. Drive slowly mm-hmm. and carefully. Mm-hmm. And uh, keep your or, lights on so you don't hit walkers. That's right. Or park at Banger and walk it. There you go. Right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. So Trent Woods has a lot of wonderful lights going mm-hmm. on, and we've got the majority of that sidewalk completed. So mm-hmm. I love that. Come out and be careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and also, don't forget the light show that is at right. 2917 mm-hmm. Roanoke Avenue, which is just off of Glen Burnie between the Highway 70 bypass at Colony and Estates, News Boulevard, there in the Colony Estates area. And if you would like to drop off a contribution, that's going to help out with that scholarship for, for Laura, Laura Wiggs. Wiggs. Yes. Yeah, that's fabulous. Some of my favorite Christmas memories are just like bundling up in the car with some hot chocolate uh-huh. and parents driving us around to see the lights. So I might do that again. I'll take the dog this time. There you go. So, <laughs> just look at all the lights. Yeah. And you brought it right back to the beginning. It's yes. National Cover Everything in Chocolate Day. There you go. Very good. <laughs> so, hey, guys, um, Merry Christmas. Um, Happy New Year. I'm looking forward to 2021. I guess we'll be back on. We we come. The college opens back up on the 4th. Yes. Students start class on the 11th. 11th. Yes. Mm-hmm. Spring semester starts 11th. Yep. So I think we're back on the air that Thursday. Is that correct? Yes. So I don't remember. And we'll have somebody from student services here to, to talk about registering for spring, if that's something you're interested in. Uh, there's still time to register for spring today and tomorrow. And then we'll uh, and then uh, early next week, we will uh, take a break. But if people are interested, have questions, they can send them in and we'll respond to them as fast as we can. Correct. Absolutely. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Hey, guys. Happy New Year. Yes. Happy New Year. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Be it's safe. Great having you. Be healthy. Be happy. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs>